Welcome to another episode of DD on the Spot. No introduction, really. I mean, it's Jessica back on for what the... I don't even know how many times she's been on, everyone. I think it's our fourth time doing this. It might be the fourth time, yeah. So it might... Yeah, I, I mean, I lose track after so many times. And just to break the ice, everyone, it's 100 degrees both both areas that we're talking in. So we're not even going to bring that up because, good God, if everyone's... Luckily, I'm in the corner, so you won't see me sweat that much. But yeah, she's on to give us an update on what she's been up to and just... Like always, Jessica, thank you so much for coming back on. Thanks for having me. Well, we got to start things off. What have you been up to this last year? Anything different? What's What's this last year been like for you? Oh, man. Um, well, a year ago, I was in prep, and I uh, competed at the Texas Cup in November of last year, and I won the overall in bikini, which was awesome. And so I'm nationally qualified for this year. Then I went to the GVO, which is a different federation of bodybuilding. And I uh, won basically their Olympia. It's called Miss Atlas. It's called the Atlas. And so I have that title and that awarded me $5,000, which is really nice. Can't go wrong with that. And so then I sort of had a tougher time dealing with the aftermath because I never prepped so hard before. And, um, that took a while to get over, but just surrounding myself with good people and praying and trying to just find what works with me and keeping my emotions cool really helped. So this prep has been pretty chill and, um, yeah, just a lot of anticipation. Cause you know, I feel I'm just ready. I'm ready to feel it all. What was the difference between the federations that you did? Um, so the NPC leads into the IFBB, which can get you on the Olympia stage, and that's really the perk there. Um, and then the GBO is more prize money incentive. Um, you can't get to the Olympia through qualifying through the GBO. They only have um, pro qualifiers and then, like, pro shows, which is, like, the Atlas. Um, and then <clears> – <throat> but I love the GBO. Um But once you become a pro in the IFBB league, you can no longer go back to the GBO. So you really want to exhaust all you can in any other federation because the IFBB is really strict on um, what you're allowed to do once you're a pro. Why isn't the IFBB taking the advice from the GBO and offering more prize money? I don't get how there's another there's another federation that just does it better. Um, you know, I don't know. You might have to take that up with them, but my guess is. Uh, the, you know, the IFBB is super big and that's really the only way you can get to the Olympia stage, which is really the ultimate goal for most bodybuilders, I would assume. So I think that's why they're like, you can either get prize money or you can go to the Olympia and try your best, which one? If someone were to, was to walk up to you and say, I'll give you $10 million or you get to walk on stage in the Olympia, which one would you take? I mean, can I do both? Like, (laughs) can I... Can I still try and go to the Olympia or am I just done with bodybuilding? After you, you wouldn't just take that $10 million and just have a nice, peaceful rest of your life then? Not n- <laughs> and never bodybuild again? Yeah, that's true. I mean, honestly, no, I can't see myself. I, I love money. You know, I value it. But like, I love doing what I'm doing. I If I weren't to bodybuild, I'd have to find something else that's pretty vigorous to to do something different you get into like scrapbooks or something like that who knows like that yeah those, like co- those coupon hoarders oh i like scrapbooking i feel like i would have to take up something like jujitsu or some type of like i don't know some type of sport that i could outlet physical energy maybe i'd be a runner at i don't know that so probably not i probably wouldn't take it to be honest i honestly think you would be a good rock climber a rock climber? I can see that. That's a tough sport. They it's got tough. those. They got those weird forearms though, just because their their forearms are just so huge that like you just it looks totally different from the rest of their body. Like in in college, I knew a couple of them, and it was yeah. They're it's a really fascinating journey. But what would you say? I ask you this every single time that you come on. What's one area of your physique that you think you've improved on the most since we last had you on? That I've improved on the most. I mean, I want to say my glutes, like my glutes definitely look better and fuller than they ever have, Um, but they still need more improvement for sure. I'd say the one thing I improved on the most is just like how I diet. That's definitely improved, um, which has improved my physique just overall. Like I realized 
even one eating like <laughs> foods such as uh, uh, crumble cookies or um, pizza or processed foods or uh, <laughs> foods basically, you know, um, even one night of that just messes up so much progress. Um, and I don't do that anymore, which has just totally changed my physique overall. So I'm just really happy with the improvement I made as a whole. Is there one thing in your diet that you've, is there one new food that you've, that you're trying now? Or is there anything else that's like more specific about the changes that you've made? Um, yeah. So one thing is I don't eat as many veggies because I try not to be as food focused. Like I try not to spend time trying to make food good. I just try to use it as fuel and go, you know, cause that's just what prep is. Like this is not, it's not Gordon Ramsay, like kitchen nightmares. You know what I mean? Um, and I don't, I asked my coach to take rice cakes and peanut butter out of my diet because, um, that's something that when I would start eating last prep, I noticed it was really difficult to put the fork down. So I was like, just give me avocado and things that aren't sweet and easy to eat so I can do that. And that's helped a lot. Well, and I know, I think the last time that we had you on, you were still in college. I believe it might've been like your last semester, but now that you're out of the whole rat race of college and you're in the real world, how has that changed your when it comes to just prepping and everything like that, because it's a whole different world, basically, as opposed to being in college where, I mean, you have a set schedule a lot of times, whereas in the day to day life, it's a lot more, you got to figure stuff out more. Yeah, it's certainly easier without school being there. Like, I don't have to worry about a test or studying or like how I'm going to stay up or um, like when I'm going to get my cardio, like I don't have to focus on studying. I do miss college. Um, like, I, I loved college. Uh but I work, you know, I worked under Sarah Viegas and, um, like she was a huge, I remember my last prep watching her prep for the Olympia really was a good motivation. So like I said, surrounding myself with people that, and I believe we actually discussed this on the second podcast we did where you were like, how's your social life changed? And I just surrounding myself with the right people and the right mindset. Um, so I'd say it's a lot easier now that I'm out of school and, uh, I just feel real chill, man. I just feel really chill. Now, I have to bring this up because you post it on your Instagram, and I find it absolutely hilarious, some of the creepy inboxes and messages that you get. And you actually post them all, which I appreciate because I did did a few times too when I get them. But how do you deal with that type of stuff? Because at a certain point, I honestly think you just got to laugh at them. Yeah, I think it's comedy. Like, I I encourage people to – I mean – there's like, there's, there's like a limit, you know, because, um, there's some real creepy DMs, uh, that I'm just like, man, you've got mental issues, but also a lot of it is really just comedy. Like, I don't know these people. So when they send me stuff, I look at it and I, I laugh, but there is a point where I'm like, dude, like you've got to be exposed because if you're doing this to other girls too, like, I just want you to know it's not working, um, and maybe this will stop you, but I don't really care. I just laugh at it, and, um, yeah, I don't know. P- people are interesting. Like, people are just so interesting in what they are into and how they approach people, and uh, I don't even know what 90% of their faces look like. You know, I just know how their verbiage is when they're typing it to me, and so I just find it uh, really funny. I'm not going to lie. I have them all screenshotted and I put them in a folder, my own ones personally. And then when I stop doing this show, I'm just going to release them all just to the general public and just be like, this is all that I've been dealing with because I, I do find them hilarious at the time because it's like some people's social skills are just so lacking that it's, it's funny yet sad at the same time where you're just like, okay, what's, what's going on here? So yeah, I, when, and whenever I see other people deal with that too, I always, I just laugh a little bit myself, but I'm just like, why do people do this? But you know, it's unfortunately, it seems to be a part of the thing, especially in this lifestyle that a lot of guests that I have talk, talk to, and you know, they deal with that, but but I don't even feel like I'm dealing with it. I mean, if anything, I just look at it and it's just, you know, it's just fun. It's just one of those things. It's not like, Oh my God, this sucks. I can't believe I have to deal with this. I'm such a victim to these things. No, like, you know, it's just, uh, it's just a DM. <laughs> For me, it just feels like a waste of time, though. That's the only thing that I mean when I say, like, oh, my God. It's like you just wasted 15 of my seconds of my life having to read this. Cr-. But, like, I saw someone went elaborate with you, and they typed off, like, whole paragraphs. And it was like a it was like a short story almost. And it's like. It- no, he did it twice. Like, yeah. he did it one time back in June. And I was like, I'm gay because, I don't know. Like, it, it was just a response. Like, I was just like, bro. And then he did it again. And he like shot, he already said he shot a shot. So he's doing it again. And I'm like, man, like, 
you were like, just stop. One of these times you just got to be like, okay, you've won me over. Where can we meet up? Stuff like that. <laughs> I, I can't remember. He ended up responding. Um, he was like, yeah, sorry. I was like, no, nah, it's all good, dude. Just know it's kind of weird. But he, you know, people don't take it too harsh. It is at the end of the day. It's kind of just like a joke. So yeah. Like the one time I got a message like that, that was like paragraphs long. I was like, I appreciate the effort, but it's like, you have it completely directed in the wrong way. But yeah. right. He had to spend a good, like 15 minutes on that. I mean, I could I, not me, you know, but to each their own. It's like, dude, publish a book then or something like that. Do something with that. Yeah, if you have that much. Yeah. He said, Hey, yo, I was like, dude, go write a book. Yeah. So anyway. now, I mean, you're working at a gym now. How's that going? No, I'm not working at a gym. Um, I do online training. Oh, I, I thought do... you were still training at that gym. No, I I separated ways with AFS, and um, and now I'm just kind of finding my way. Like I'm very focused on just these competitions that I'm doing, and um, focus on my clients that I do have, and more to come on, and just trying to figure out like what I'm gonna do in the next six months. Um, I turned 25. I don't know now 11 days ago so it's just a time in my life where I'm like pondering I'm not confused I'm just like trying to sort and compartmentalize aspects of my life that I need to enjoy it while it lasts I'm 11 months away from being 30 for Christ's sake so hey 30 flirty and thriving my stupid friends have sent me that too. And I was like, okay, that's, I'm so sorry. I know, but Jennifer Garner is such jam. Like I can't. Yeah, it's true. I mean, I, I, I am going to watch that movie probably on my 30th birthday, just as a joke, probably just with some friends, just so I can, it's but a good movie. it's such a good movie. I'm not the demographic that it was made for though. So I'll, but I'll watch yeah, it with a, I'll watch it with a smile on my face, at least with that. But yeah, it's, it's, it's fascinating with that. And I mean, as you, all these preps are always different, but how have you been mentally throughout this prep? Has it been easier than other preps? Or if you were to grade yourself on a scale of like one to 10, where would you be at? You think mentally at this prep right now? Mm, well, uh, my last prep, I'd say I was probably mentally around a five. Um, it was a tough time. It was a really tough time. And I was alone throughout the whole thing, which just sometimes the way it is. Um, this prep, I'd say I'm about a 9.3, just riding and cruising and um, just sort of surrounding myself with better people. I feel more confident. I feel less uh, like I have crutches that I'm sitting on with certain things, whether it be diet, supplements, whether it be – I'm just feeling so much more with myself, and I would probably contribute that a lot to, like, reflection and um, praying, like – just getting closer with with who I am because at the end of the day like prepping feels more like character change um and each time if, if your character isn't changing or you're not getting better at prepping then it's like you're not doing yourself a favor so I uh I made a big focus to just to be the best that I absolutely can this prep and no shortcuts no no self-destructive behavior no denial about anything just being just being open and honest with myself about what I'm doing, you know? I mean, I do got to bring up the elephant in the room that we talked about earlier. When it's in the hundreds, like somewhat regularly down at where you're living, like I'm not going to be doing anything today, you know, fitness wise or anything. I'm not even going to be able to go on my walk just because it's too cold and I, I mean, too hot. And I just, you know, it will be a disaster. But how do you deal with this? Because I don't think, I think we might have talked about before, but like this is where I, this is the one day of the year where I get to experience what you guys experience weekly. Dude, my body was just, it's just an adapt adaptation, I guess, because um, I don't mind the heat at all. In fact, I wake up in the morning and like it can be 69 or 70 and I'm cold as hell. Like I have to go outside and feel the sun and um, I, I'm constantly covering myself because I'm just so cold all the time. Um, so for me, the heat, like when I walk out in the morning, it feels like a natural blanket on my face. It's, it's an amazing feeling. I like the heat. I don't mind it, but it is hot. Like it gets, it gets hot, hot, but nothing to where I'm like, oh, I can't go outside. You know, that's definitely like a Northern person type of thing. Like oh, I can't go outside in this heat, but I feel the same. Like I can't even imagine being up North and it being super cold. I think I would probably hibernate, you know, I'd probably stay inside and like coddle up. I wouldn't, um, but I do love the mountains, so 
but we're we're experience you know we're on just we're on the spectrum just on different sides absolutely yeah i mean it's 70 for me is that's literally paradise going out for a walk at 70 degrees that that was like last week and that was just absolutely perfect but yeah it's i mean honestly you don't even really have to do that much cardio just go outside for like an hour in this temperature and then you'll sweat off even more than you ever would doing cardio honestly yeah i mean or you could do both do cardio in the heat and just get double whammy but so you mentioned before that before we started the podcast that you used to run like this and for track in the heat yeah that's like child cruelty like how did they how did they convince you guys to do that dude if you're if you're an athlete you know you just if you're an athlete, you just, you go through it. You suffer through it. I did it in the cold too. We'd have our fitness test for soccer in the cold. And I remember it's always way harder to run for me in the cold because the air is so much drier that my lungs uh, start to hurt and my ears start to hurt in the cold because the wind usually, and um, you know, my body doesn't feel it. My muscles aren't as warm. So running in the cold is a lot harder for me than running in the heat. I mean, I can run in 106 and I'm just, I just get hot as fuck, you know, like I can feel my insides burning, uh, but that's fine. Um, yeah. So I guess just being, you know, as an athlete, you just got to do what you got to do. So I'll just give you a little hindsight into what it's like actually on the opposite side here. So our baseball season, you know, starts here in, you know, April, May. And at that point it's still 20 to 30 degrees sometimes, so, and I would be the starting pitcher. So my skin would dry up so much and it would crack open that the ball would just be bloody just because my hands were bleeding constantly because my, the skin was just dead because it was so cold out there and you were just, it would crack. And yeah, it's not, not that fun of an experience. I just, yeah, just it's weird experience. because when I'm in the cold, even if I just barely hit my finger or toe, it's like that part of my body is done for in the cold. But if I hit it in the heat, it's fine. So you know, blood flow. I think I just, I just have way better blood flow in the heat. Try getting beamed in the side by a guy throwing 90 miles an hour in the cold. That sounds really bad, dude. I'm it sorry. Was, it was, it was not pleasant. I will say that, but you know, Hey, it's, it's the stuff that we got to deal with. But one of the questions that I honestly came up with a few episodes ago, and I'm pinching myself that I never came up with this before is that if bodybuilding had to have a talent portion, like a light, like a beauty pad or anything like that, if they had a talent portion, what would your talent be? My talent, uh, dude, um, like anything. Yeah. The first thing I came up with is I can chug a water bottle really fast. like just slamming it down my face. So that's a party trick. Um, I can jump rope pretty fast. Uh, I can like rap songs like from start to finish a few of them. Um, I can do good accents. So but, you know, honestly, if you put me on a stage and you said, show me what you got, and I had a water bottle, that would be my move. What's your record? How fast have you done it? Have you timed yourself? In less than a second. Maybe a second. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I practiced, and I practiced a long time, and I practiced to the point where I could throw up, I, where I did throw up, just so that I could do this at a party, and then it just became a skill. So, like, when you're talking about if you had accepted that $10 million, I think you would just be that weird lady that just does weird skills like that, and that would be your new thing that just caught on. Be like, oh, look if at I Jessica do this. Dollars, like, I'd probably be so generous with it, I wouldn't even know what to do with it. I'm not – I would definitely invest in a lot of food, a new home, a new car, um, all the typical human things, but probably some weird stuff, too, that's, like, not even tangible. Probably just, like, stuff on the internet where I'm like, hmm – I don't know. Who knows, man? I don't, I don't know. Yeah. I would be honestly way too generous myself. Like I, I've always thought like, how has no one ever been like that? But then again, I've never been put in that situation where you actually have that much. So, you know, exactly. Yeah. That's, that's, yeah. that's the problem with that. But I mean, going into these shows, it's always rough, no matter how many times I talk to people, but at what point in your journey do things really start to get hard mentally? Is there like a certain weeks out where it just gets much, much harder? Or is it all, or is it like from the very start? Uh, no, not from jump. Um, I'd say like it started, I mean, it's not even, honestly, it's more physical at this point. Like I just am eating so little and now I'm getting lower in carbs. Like he's just experimenting with my body a little bit cause we're in a great place. Um, to where it's like, I mean the mental, I just, I've just learned to just detach my emotion from it and, um, it's fine. They just, 
I just go throughout the day. But so physically, I'd say it's more challenging just because I don't have a lot of food. So training can be tougher. Cardio, not so much, but train like resistance training, I think is really, really tough when I'm on this little food. What's one exercise that if you see on your plan, you get really, really excited. And then what's one exercise that if you see on it, you just want to strangle whoever set it up? Um, I'd say one exercise I get excited about is something like single leg hip thrust with like a dumbbell. I'm like, Ooh, ass work. And then one that I'm like, is like, if I'm at destination Dallas or something like that, I train with Caleb severely sometimes and just like he's very spontaneous. So out of the random, he'll, we'll start doing sled work where we have to pull a sled. It's like strongman work. And I like it, you know, I like all exercises, but that one in particular, especially after we've done, you know, a lot of leg work, I'm like, <laughs> but it, it goes away quickly. You know, we get it over with. So sleds is definitely harder, but I like working my butt and isolation and stuff like that. Cause yeah. For me, the one that always sucked was those stupid extensions. When you do the, um, for for pitching, we would do for the forearms. We would have like the band, and then you would have a weight at the bottom, and you just pull oh. it up like that. Never get a bigger burn in your entire life, but it's just I, yeah. I really like. I don't. I don't even focus. I don't even think about my forearms. To be honest, I've hit. I've, <laughs> I've never thought about them once. They've time. honestly gotten jacked for me just from like clicking the mouse as many times as I do, just editing this show and doing all that stuff. So it's a, at least there's a little bonus part to that, at least of doing this, but I mean, and getting out of college though, too, there is more free time. Like you said, do you at least enjoy things other than living this lifestyle at the moment? Or are you just a hundred percent focused on this? Um, I'm focused on other, like my clients. I really enjoy time talking to them um, my friends, uh, but you know, like, and I've been going to like, I've been going out and just enjoying that time too. Like I figured, um, something, one of my teammates here, uh, gave me some insight on is like, when you go out, if you just bring like a beer bottle or something and you fill it with diet soda, then it sort of brings inclusivity, which, um, like you know, I like to be included in that. And so that's better. But in reality, I'm just really focused. And um, this, this is what I love to do. So it's, um, it is my hobby, you know, so cardio and going to the gym and lifting and cooking, eating all that is um, what I, I don't consider that to be like a job or something like dreadful during the day. That's, that's the hobby. That's what I like to do. So I'd say I'm, I'm pretty focused on that. If I were to poll everyone that you knew and said, what's the best food that Jessica makes, what do you think the answer would be? The best food I make. Damn, well, I really don't make a ton. Um, You know, I can make some banging oats and eggs. Like, I can make a good mixture of that. Um, yeah, we'll go with that. Oats, oats and eggs. Like if you want a good combination and at first you're, you may be turned off, but you just have to let me work my magic and, um, protein coffee. Like I know it's going to be blurred, but I swear I'm going to start a business one day with it. I just protein coffee because people drink Starbucks drinks and they're like 400 calories and they don't even realize it. But protein coffee tastes so similar and it even adds texture that milk does. And it's so sweet too, because and it's just with black coffee and it's like, oh wow, like but no nobody does this. Dutch Bros, um, Starbucks, like nobody does protein coffee. So I've always thought it was a fun idea to like, I don't know, entertain myself with, but of course I have no nothing to build that on except Nothing fans. but a dream. Nothing but a dream, but hey, you know, we're working our way towards yeah, no, hey, that's actually not that bad of an I believe me, I've heard some BS ideas on this show, and that's that's one of the less BS ideas that I've heard. Well, I thanks. <laughs> that's good to hear. You know, hey, I mean, there's not there's not really that much, you know, to compare it to. I've probably gotten about five or six other ones. One of them was like jeans. One of them was literally like a jean jacket, but like it's like a an outfit that you zip up from the very bottom all the way to the top. I, I wouldn't wear that, but you I, know that that might have been one of the dumber ones that I've seen. And then another one was like an an inflatable shirt that you wear or something, and it's like, well, 
if you live by water, maybe, but other than that, so again, people on here, they get in these prep brains and next thing you know, they're just, in, they're just trying to pitch other, th I think yeah, there should be a, like schizophrenic and shit. there or... should be a shark tank where they have prep brain people come on and try to, and try to pitch their stuff. That'd be hilarious. Honestly, they should just have a shark tank where they bring all the stupid ideas just for like a compilation video. I love shark. I used to fall asleep to that, but I, I can't say protein coffee couldn't be on Shark Tank. Maybe, maybe like I can see like Kevin O'Leary or maybe like Robert taking up that offer. You know what I mean? Maybe even Mark, like if he thinks it helps his athletes or something. I don't know. I would on. Yeah. I was going to say Mark would probably be the number one there. But one thing that I've been talking about too recently with people is that a lot of guests that I have on that show look that they present is not their favorite look. A lot of them prefer maybe like, four weeks out or like a different spot where do you fall on that do you prefer your show look more or do you like the look where it's like just before show look um you know i actually like the after show look from what i've experienced so far um it seems like with my body in particular it's just talking to someone about this but um i fill out really quickly in my upper half like my upper body but my lower we body we can tell to... yeah so I mean, you think I'm big, but I'm really not. Um, but it fills out and the lower half doesn't. So um, I think I prefer like eating. And then the next day when I wake up, I look like really, really full. Um, but on stage, you know, it's just hard to achieve. So I've always gone on stage like semi-flat, semi-carved up. But that's something me and my coach are just going to have to keep collaborating on. And that's why I'm at this place right now where I'm almost stage lean, just got a few more pounds kind of to get off my butt um, or my glutes. And, uh, and I think he's just kind of experimenting with me to see how we can make that better because I do fill out way more on my upper body than I do my lower body without spilling over on the lower body. So we'll figure it out. We'll figure that out. I like the look after show day. What, in your opinion, makes a coach a good coach? Because I've talked to so many people, and it differs from person to person, but the vast majority of coaches that I've heard about you know, aren't, aren't necessarily good coaches. I think that they're kind of a little bit more of a rarity. But for every person, it differs. But in your own scenario, what makes a coach a good coach? Um, well, I think the, a really clear answer um, would be communication. Like anything – that needs to be communicated should be communicated because otherwise you're not getting coached at that point. You're getting just directed and that, um, can be a pitfall for people. Um, another one is I like a conservative coach. I'm not really one to like just load up on everything or try and push something super hard or a coach that's constantly changing things that don't need to be changed at all. Um, and I like to keep it simple because I think simple methods work. So I think a coach where, you know, they don't try to be too technical and they try to get to know their athlete's body well enough to where there is no confusion about what's coming up whenever the show day is coming up. We know what we're going to do because we've tested your body with this and this is how you're going to peak and it's going to look good. Like a coach that's, that brings a lot of attention to your body and your needs and, um, and knows and, and, and wants the best for you. Like doesn't just throw you in a show to put you in a show, but chooses shows with intention to help you in your career. So, um, I would say, I mean, I've had a really great experience with my coach, Jay, um, Jay King Cobra on Instagram, team Cobra, repping it. Um, I've had a really great experience with him. He listens a lot. And, uh, you know, if there ever is it something where I'm like, eh, and he tells me to do it, I'm like, Hey, I'll immediately call him. And he's super receptive. He's like, cool. Let's look. You, we don't have to do that. Let's just keep going as it flows. And then, you know, but I do listen to him on a lot of things. So we have good conversation, like pros and cons about things. Why is this needed? Um, do I really need this? Can I go without this? What's the smarter move here? And we really work together well as a team, just communicating like that. So, um, I've had coaches where I just feel uncomfortable around. Um, and you know, Jay's made me feel well comfortable. He has a lot of wins. He's really has a lot of faith in God. And I think he brings good energy to the shows. Um, and he, you know, he cares and he wants the best. So, um, I've had a really great experience so far with him as a coach.
and I mean this with all due respect, but how the hell are you this pale living in Texas? How am I this pale? Yeah. Uh, I think I'm, I think I'm, I don't, I. You're, you're approaching levels of me. I'll just say that. <laughs> look, I know. Um, I don't know how else to put it, but like, I'm not scared of the sun, but. I think we talked about this in the last podcast where you're like Howie from the bench warmers. Yeah. I'm like Howie from the bench warmers, but <laughs> I still like the sun. I do take D3 because I am really white. I think it's my genetics. Um, like I was meant to be a redhead for sure. Cause I have like freckles on me that look like redhead, but I also took Accutane and my skin is much, much different than it used to be. Like before I had, you know, acne in a lot of places and my face was a lot thicker because of it. Even my skin got thinner. And, um, when I go on the sun now, I have to wear sunscreen because the Accutane, basically took off a layer of my skin I think and renewed it and because of that it is just so sensitive so um and I like if I want a tan I'll put on a you know a rub tan I I want my skin to look really nice when I'm in my 40s and 50s and I just um yeah so I I'm I'm all about skin no and that's hey as someone like me who is just even more pale where it's you know it's being out on a day like today, too, good God, I'd last probably about five minutes before I just get burnt to an absolute crisp. Or I get farmer's tan, you know. It's really it's really one of the two there. But, I mean, with the with the whole mindset that you have just with this lifestyle, and I just find it crazy, you know, just what you guys go through year in, year out with the whole mental side of things. What is one thing that you wish you would have known when you started this journey, at least on the mental side of things, that you would maybe give to someone who was thinking about starting in this sport? Like starting from day one, like back years, years ago, like six years the, ago. The day when you're like, hey, I think I could do a show. Oh, man. What was the question again? What is one thing that you wish you would have known about the mental side of this whole entire journey that if you could go back and talk to yourself the moment that you said like, hey, I should do a show. Well, if there was a time capsule that would just appear right now and you could go back and talk to the younger version of Jessica who had that very thought for the first time, what would you tell her? Uh, I mean, I have no regrets about any shows I've done. The first show I did was at Summer Shredding, and I looked like I just looked. <laughs> it was a, it was an experience, you know. But it's those things that I, I always say, do it. I don't know if that's the best advice. Um, I, I would tell myself to, and being full transparency, I would probably tell myself to wait on certain things. I would probably tell myself to wait. Don't be hasty with that because it's going to change your chemistry forever. So I'd probably tell myself that. And it's a marathon. It's not a sprint. Um, and I would probably tell myself to start eating more organic foods at that moment. Um, but other than that, you know, I've really, my bodybuilding career has been my bodybuilding career. I've, and I've loved every second of it from the wins to the losses to the changes. And um, there's nothing. I would tell myself, go on the show, go how you're going, do what you got to do. Cause you know what? In a few months, you're going to do a different show. And then in the next few years, you're going to do more shows and you're just going to learn from it all. So, but those are the three things, eat organic, wait on everything that you can putting in your body and, um, go for it. What's the best advice that someone outside of yourself has given you when it comes to your bodybuilding? Um, to be either in or out and to, to honestly, there's a lot of people I see that do this sport and I'm not sure why they do it because they don't love it. And it's just like any other thing. I mean, don't force yourself. If you want to look, if you want to look good and aesthetic and you want to look like a bodybuilder, it takes a lot of work, but that doesn't mean you want to compete. Just because you want to look like a bodybuilder doesn't mean you want to go through the dieting, the cardio, the workouts, the the mental aspects. So I think people really, they butt heads on that and they think that bodybuilding is really a means to an end of looking good. And uh, that puts them in a really weird position mentally. Um, so, I mean... Yeah, I don't know. So you also posted one of the funniest things I've ever seen. And this was before, I mean, this was after I had you on the last time 
when it was just a video of you just being the crap out of your stomach, you were just hitting yourself as hard as you could saying that like, that was your goal to just be able to be able to take a punch. What other benefits have you found out from this journey oh God, that, so that you've got? Cause I saw that and I was like, okay, she's got way too much free time on her hands. <laughs> I do no, And I, I have, um, I have ADHD. And so like, sometimes I get manic. You're preaching to the choir. Yeah. You know, if I don't take medication or something like that, then um, I get really manic and I start doing really like just random stuff or dance or sing. And so I have to control that stuff. And uh, I know what video you're talking about. I have not benefit at all from punching myself in the stomach. And I think that's be an influencer and just go out in the middle of the street and just do that in front of people and just see what their reaction would be. Yo, that, that's how you become famous. Or sorry, I saw a guy. He was outside my old apartment complex in College Station, and he would do this frequently. He had boxing gloves, and he was a bigger guy, but he would punch a tree for hours just out there. And I would kind of just sit and watch him for a while. Um, but you know, it, it whatever makes you happy. Punching trees, punching your stomach. Probably not punching your stomach, but uh, yeah, I don't. I don't know. That's kind of weird to think about. I'll do it again if you want me to, but. <laughs> You know, I don't, I don't want your digestion to really. No, my digestion's good, man. My digestion is on point. I know. The only time I've ever done that for myself was one time when I had just a really bad case of stomach ache. And that was the one thing I thought that could get myself. And it wasn't even my stomach. It was like more like my gut, my lower air, not, not where everyone thinks it is right above that. I wasn't doing that. Cause that. Oh, you were trying to like punch the shit out of yourself. Yeah, literally. basically. Yeah. Well, I mean, you know, I, I think uh, maybe it didn't, like it didn't work, but it, it didn't work, but it helped morally. I'll say. <laughs> yeah, that's good. Like whatever helps you get through mentally, man. Exactly. Exactly. But yeah, I, I had to mention that because when I saw that video, I was like, okay, that's one of the funniest things I've ever seen because it's just, I was like, that's Jessica being Jessica because I've talked, like I said, I've talked to you for the fourth time now and I've kind of got a decent idea on what, <laughs> what Jessica's like. So I'm just like, yeah, that's just, that's just Jessica being Jessica. But yeah. again, I ask you this every single time you come on and I will continue to ask it. Change one thing about the sport. Everyone will go along with it. Will be one thing you'd like to see changed. Um, I can't remember what I told you last time, but I just, I so just wish so badly that a bikini, like someone that has bikini body, the structure, the shape, the weight, like the size could take off their heels, go barefoot and do a posing routine. Like a physique woman could, even though they're not as big, it doesn't matter. I think that's part of the beauty of the sport and what makes it an art is the posing. And um, sometimes bikini feels quite restrictive, but you just kind of have to adapt. Um, so if I could change one thing about the sport, I think I would love I would love to see people be able to flex their muscles um, in whatever way they want and make a posing routine, be barefoot, just, it'd be cool. That's the one thing that confused me the most when I first really got into this, doing this podcast, is I was like, why doesn't every division, yeah, just do the same, like, physique posing or bodybuilding posing? Like, I don't get why they do something that's different, so, yeah. Well, would... they're trying to see different muscles. They're trying to accentuate different muscles, and um, and that's really, I think, the yeah. fact. No, I know, but it's just... That's yeah, that whole thing too, and the high heels too. It's like really, you do you, do you honestly need those high heels when you're posing? You you honestly don't when you really think about it. Well, for bikini, like to push the glutes out, it's super helpful because you're like standing up. Uh, you can just raise your you can just raise your calves a little bit or go on your Bruh, tippy toes. <laughs> if I try and get on my tippy toes while I'm posing, it's hard. I used to do that for check ins, and my coach was like, "You should just put on your heels," and I was like, "I should probably just put on my heels." And uh, it works a lot better, but again, I, I wish I could just take them off and do like a classic posing routine just for fun. It's just exactly. what it. Well, that's what you should do. Like if they ever had like your own talent, you should be like, my talent is that I can do the bodybuilding poses basically. That would be cool. I would, you know, and that's a better idea. What I'd probably do is like have like a posing routine in mind or something and just like go for that. <laughs> Maybe that'd be better than the water bottle. I don't know. If there was one song that you could choose to be your posing routine song for the rest of your entire journey, what would it be? Hmm. I'm going to have to go Vertigo by Khalid because I did a posing routine to that whenever I first got into the sport and I absolutely adore that song for posing. Um, and I really liked the routine that I had. Um, and so I think I thought, I thought it was a perfect song. Vertigo by Khalid. It's a great song. There are some songs, yeah, that are just meant to be, 
used in the sport and when we do have you on again a year from today where would you like to be at in your journey where would you like to be at in your overall life what are some goals that you'd like to have achieved when we have you back on again Damn, I need to go back and watch this podcast to see what they were last time because you ask me this every time. I know um, I do, and I and I I have them written down next to me. I always write down the little things like when you're done. So I have the list with me, but I'm not going to tell you. You're going to have to watch it for yourself. I got to get my views up, so you know. Uh, okay, okay, I'll go watch it back. I don't remember. Um, my goal for a year from now would be to one be a pro in the IFBB league. Um, two to to be financially secure in somewhere where I'm really happy. Um, and three, I think just more, um, connected with myself even more because there have definitely been times as I reflect where I've been not connected with myself and been destructive and, um, the more connected I am with myself and the man up top and just the more connected I am with people, the more connected I am with my body, the more connected I am with my soul. So Um, and a year from now, I'd like to feel even better and more comfortable being like a soul in this body. Well, I mean, for last year you wrote, get over my crack addiction. So I think you did that. I think, (laughs) I think you, I I think she might've done that. So yeah. Well, you know, I I, I was figuring too, like you were, you were, you were ghastly when it came to I mean, you were just like so skinny the last time I talked to you. So it was just like, okay, I think she got her on. I'm joking, of course, but I thought you were being, I cannot remember. I wouldn't. No, if you, you had didn't told me say that, that. I would have believed you. No, I I know you're you're like me. You have that ADD where you're so gullible at times where you're just like, wait, did I really say? Because like again, I say some random stuff too where I'm like, I might have actually said that like deep down, like I don't know. Yeah, it wouldn't surprise me if I said to get over my crack addiction. <laughs> I mean, it might surprise me a little bit, but <laughs> I feel like yeah, well, maybe I just said it. The, the fact, yeah, the fact, everyone that she believed me for a quick second really goes to show again. That's just, I that's, overcame my crack cocaine addiction. Thank you. Thank you guys. Well, so honestly, much. I would honestly think doing cocaine while on prep might actually be helpful because it would give you so much more energy. Um, yeah, of course, but no, definitely not. <laughs> need to get up for cardio. No problem. Just take a whiff. <laughs> uh, isn't that what, I mean, there's other, eh, there's, better, there's better and better costly ways. One of them being just like protein coffee. coffee. Yeah. Yeah, protein coffee, sleep, and um, yeah, music. I don't know. So do you plan on making a protein coffee that doesn't have that icky aftertaste that every protein drink that I've ever had has, where you have that aftertaste for the next two hours? Yes, I can make the best protein. I'm telling you, Ryan. I'm telling no, you. No, when I was in when I was in my best shape and I was doing the Myoplex stuff, they had that chocolate milk that really tasted like chocolate milk that I loved. But then they also had like a birthday cake flavor that just stuck with you for like hours afterwards. No, this is just no, no. It's not like that at all. It tastes like coffee. It tastes like sweet. It tastes like Starbucks cop, like something you get from Starbucks. Like there's no, and that's what I'm trying to say is. This it could be so much easier for people, and you can put it in hot, you can put it in cold. It could be easier for people, but we, we live in. This is how many times I've had coffee my entire life. Are you serious? I'm already hyper enough. I don't need that. Yeah, I don't know. I just love the taste. I just love coffee. The only I'll- times I've ever done it too are when if I go, I have to go to work the next morning, and I get like zero sleep. Then that's the only time I'll ever drink coffee. But yeah, yeah so. I mean, I prefer coffee over an energy drink for sure. You know, I think coffee is very natural, actually. I mean, caffeine is, of course, its own drug, but um, even decaf coffee, which I drink, is so good. I love coffee, and I think it's um, way better than a bang or uh, what else is there, like C4s or goes like way better than any of that crap so yeah i love i love coffee one time i did make the mistake of having a five-hour energy along with a monster and i think i had i might that might have been the other time i had coffee too and my heart rate was i think up to like 200 i think what that's terrible man i'm so sorry yeah i think i would have an anxiety attack well that that happened too because i thought that i was literally dying and so let's just say i probably lost a good five pounds in sweat alone let's just be honest with that so yeah, I can see that, man. Isn't five hour energy like a thermogenic? Like, isn't- I was working a double shift in a warehouse, so I needed it. But then I accidentally, I did the thing where I chugged half the monster and then I put the five hour into the monster and then shook it up and then had like a mixture of it. So, yeah. That sounds kind of lit though, but I mean, 
I Sounds mean, like bad, bad come down. I was like 22 when I did it. So like, I don't know if I did it now, if I'd be able to, you know, withstand it, but I had that young metabolism where, you know, stuff worked out, you know, a little bit better, but you know, again, Jessica, like always, it's so great having you on and talking to you. You're always a delight to have on. And You're so chill. Yeah. And we do this every year. So I'll see you again. See you again in a year. Who knows next thing And you know, I wish I was a little more like peppy and stuff for you, but really I'm just so chill right well, now. She's getting over crack everyone. So what do you think? She's not going to Yeah, like just, right I'm not on yeah. crack anymore. So just don't expect to before the other time. She's like, yeah, Hey Ryan, how's it going? This is really great. And then she's like, and then everyone, I got to say this before we get started, she always said, just give me 15 seconds. And then she'd go off camera. Camera, I'd hear a light go on and then I'd, I'd, you could like hear her smoking it and then she'd be just all peppy and everything like that. So, you know, she didn't do that this time, but yeah, um, yeah, no, no, at, for at, this one. At, at, at least there's that. But again, you guys, everyone go and check her out on her Instagram page. All right, be worried. We'll get inspired to get off that couch. And yeah, every, every time she embarrasses me, every goddamn time. We need the flex, right? Yep, yep, it's, part we need that. Podcast. it's part of the podcast. I get, I, I mistakenly made people do that the first episode and then it just caught on where I'm just like, God, what did I do to myself? So, I mean, Hey, you're getting more attraction from it for sure. I know the guys on here love to watch the flex. So they get off on that stuff. So let's be completely honest on that. So I, I know. know you'll probably take this part out, but I know. No, I'm not going to take it out because I honestly have gotten to a point where I just don't care about that stuff. Yeah, anymore, where I'm just like, Aaron you guys are like, cre- like, you guys are creeps. Like, let's just be honest. But you know, like, Hey, if you watch the show, <laughs> I, I don't care, but like, let's just call it what you are. So yeah, it's yeah. quite the sport for that. But yeah, so feeling good. Absolutely. Looking good. Yeah. Here, let's get a most muscular in there. Let's, let's see that everyone. That's, that's, that's ridiculous. Insane. Good God, Jessica. You're going to, yeah, you're going to do pretty good for a bikini competitor too. I mean, good. That just shows how the bikini comp- division's getting up. If you look like that as a comp- bikini competitor. Yeah, I know. I can't even imagine the next few years, but we'll see. And I'm really excited and uh, we'll have to catch up after my show too, for sure. Yeah, absolutely. Well, I tricked her into giving me her number ever into her giving me her number. So, you know, we got that. See, that's how you guys do it, guys. You start a podcast and then you just have them on a couple of times and then you're just like, you slowly get them to lower their confidence and then you're just like, okay, yeah, here's the number. Yeah. So, you know, yeah, lower, <laughs> yeah, yeah. I had that, I lower had their that. expectations and then you just slowly hide it in there. So it's like, I mean, with all these 60 year olds too, man, I'm just raking. I'm just kidding. But no. <laughs> I mean, Hey, I'm not even surprised to all you guys out there. Is there yeah, that. You're making it happen for Ryan. Yeah. Follow me on Instagram. Follow her on Instagram too. Yeah. And yeah. <sighs> If there's a, if you do have a crack addiction, you know, my best luck, my best luck to you. But again, everyone, this is Ryan Johnson, DD on the spot signing off. Have a great day, everyone. Thank you.